Good morning from statistically the rainiest city in the US. Today we have been blessed and the sun is shining. Hopefully it doesn't rain today. A couple of days ago we jumped on a Greyhound bus and rode three hours up the coast from Portland to get us here in Seattle. Today we are doing another food tour but we were blown away when we started researching this. I thought we would do like one food tour in the United States but it turns out Portland food is boiled chicken and rice. Just a bit weird. Surprisingly good and Seattle food that is so good. Oh my god. So weird it's right a very different things. And to be honest, I'm more excited about the Seattle food, probably because this one includes a hot dog. We've started the day down by the wharf at Pier 62. Here's the sun. Ooh. And we are super close to what some people call the soul of the city. And we can see the Space Needle. <sighs> Seattle! Our first food of the day is actually located inside this soul of the city place, so we're gonna head there now. undersold the pier. There is chess, checkers, connect four. Amazing views, seats for everyone. There's like a little mini soccer pitch for some reason. A fire pit that goes on every week. It's really cool. Seattle's like one of the best cities we've been to so far. <laughs> the soul of the city we're talking about is Pike Place Market which is this one behind me actually started operating in 1907 so over a hundred years it's really become home to a lot of farmers and people that need to just sell their wares and tourists we love it now, this entire city of Seattle is kind of known for its seafood and having a market that's right on the water means they've got some pretty fresh stuff so our first food on the list from this market is a smoked salmon bagel and I cannot be more excited if we can find it somewhere that sells bagels. One place was shopped, one place it was $24, but they recommended a third place, Three Girls Bakery, and we got a, whoa, cream cheese and salmon bagel. Look at that, it is heavy, wow. That is so good. Don't cream cheese on my face? Salmon is like perfectly smoky and the cream cheese and capers are so fresh. This is huge. Time for a coffee? I've got just the place. Being in America, Starbucks is everywhere. We've probably passed three or four on our way just walking to this market. But there's one that's very special near this market. It's the first Starbucks ever. Opened in the 1970s. And it's pretty famous because there's a huge line out the front that we're gonna have to wait in. <laughs> this might be the longest line we have ever waited in for coffee. I don't even know if they do anything different to regular Starbucks. It's just the original one. We could literally walk up the street to another Starbucks, walk right in and order straight away. But we're choosing to wait here to experience the original. <laughs> for the funnest fact they have and apparently for the first 15 years of Starbucks as a company they didn't actually serve coffee they served like the coffee beans so you could make coffee at home but they didn't put in an espresso machine until 15 years into the business which blows my mind because you just think of it as a cafe another thing I've noticed is that they have definitely refined and bettered the logo the original one is a bit creepy and a bit weird I went for one of the heritage options which is like a lavender latte 
interesting but good. They gave us a free sample of the iced lavender latte out the front and it was amazing. I think it's better iced but it's too cold today to order that. So I went for the Pike Roast Latte which is a coffee roast that's specifically designed and sold here in the first ever store. So we've got two very unique drinks and they're both pretty good. They opened in 1971. No, that shop existed in 1912. And they were only selling coffee beans for the first 13 years. I know you did, but you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm so hungry. Let's go. We have found the famous Gum Alley, I think is what it's called. I am impressed and disgusted. I don't know how something like this becomes a thing. It's kind of pretty until you think and remember what it is and then it's a bit gross. This is close to the grossest thing we've ever done, if not the grossest. We don't have any gum to join in the tradition, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. I think let's go for a walk and try and forget about this so we can eat. Yeah, we're supposed to be on a food tour. Final stop at Pike Place, Pike Place Market. <laughs> Our final stop at Pike Place Market is Beaches Cheese Emporium. I've made that name up though. For some mac and cheese, the world's best mac and cheese. We decided to go here because Cara and Nate are inspiration for everything. Came here and it looks amazing. Look at that. So the thing that sets Beaches apart is that it's family owned and they make their own cheese in house. It's a five step, two day process to make the cheese and you can actually watch them making it in the store. Wow, oh my gosh, that's delicious. It is so simple, but super tasty. The pasta is cooked to perfection and the cheese sauce is very like cheesy but like almost a punchy cheese. Mmm. Alright, shit. It is so cool in there though. The fact that you can sit there and watch them make the cheese while you're eating your grilled cheese or your mac and cheese is so much fun and you get to sit on these little like milk shaped stools. <laughs> I love it. Now we are going to what Jordan has been looking forward to since he found out about it. We're going to go try something called a Seattle dog. Now we are at the most anticipated spot for me at least. We're getting a hot dog. made this for us said he wasn't convinced when he first heard about it this Seattle dog is a normal hot dog but you've got a bunch of bell peppers and sauteed onions and tomato on top and cream cheese on the bun which was the weirdest part he said that he couldn't believe it when he heard about it but it changed his mind once he tried it uh, most people they when they hear cream cheese on the hot dog they're like why yeah, yeah but believe me the first time I, I heard about it I'm like cream cheese is supposed to be on a bagel yeah it's, it's on a hot dog <laughs> I really like it. I'm not usually a big fan of like onions and anything that could be considered healthy, but it works. Cream cheese, you can't taste as much as I thought you'd be able to, but it kind of complements the hot dog. It's so messy. Okay, I've stripped it down to the bare elements. I've got the cream cheese, the bun, and the hot dog to see what it's really like. And I'm gonna take a big cream cheese bite. It really does work. I'm not even just saying that with the camera. That really works. I'm gonna go buy some cream cheese. Can you try some? I really wasn't sold. Because cream cheese belongs on a bagel. But that works for some reason. So weird, it's right. You can finish it though. All right, starting to get really full. And the next thing we're trying is actually gonna be our dinner and we have had it before. So we kind of know what to expect, but I 
think it's kind of equally as famous as some of the other stuff we've tried. About a 20 minute walk to get there. It's pointing towards me. So Dick's Drive-In is somewhat of a Seattle institution. It opened all the way back in like 1950s and is super popular because the menu and prices haven't really changed since. We're gonna go pick up some takeaway dinner and on the way back, we're gonna call into Molten Cakes for a dessert before heading back home for a bit of a feast. Dinner, dessert, time to go home and enjoy. The reason we found Dick's for the first time was because we were trying to find the cheapest food possible in Seattle, and this one came up on a few different blog posts. We went there and we were pretty shocked by what we saw. It's just like you've been zapped back to the 50s and you're in original McDonald's, like you see in the movie Founder. There's so many burgers being whipped up and made together. I don't know, it's just all old school and it's really cool. Yeah, it's like burgers and milkshakes. Yeah, went for a cheeseburger. <laughs> Say goodbye. Mm. A really simple standard cheeseburger, but we got two burgers and fries for eight dollars something. Which is crazy cheap in America. Yeah, for America prices, like the two coffees we got when we were at the Pike Place Market were like 13 American dollars or something crazy. So this to be cheaper. I can see why with those prices it's become like an institution. Plus it just tastes like a bit fresher than McDonald's. Mm. Not as greasy, I don't know. Okay. The last thing on our Seattle food tour, molten lava cakes. This was recommended through, again, another blog post, and we got some ice cream with it. Whoa, caramel. So once you order, it takes 10 minutes for it to get cooked. So it's really fresh. That is rich. <laughs> that is so rich. That is like 10 times better than a Domino's lava cake. And like, like crunchy pecans or caramel or whatever it is. Ooh la la. In my opinion, Today's food beats Portland, and Portland was voted the like foodie capital of America. I agree. Every place we went was a little bit better in Seattle, so. Tomorrow we are going back out on the streets and we're gonna explore what Seattle has to offer that's not food, so it should be a more budget-friendly day. It feels like we just stole. What is this place? Because I think we spent almost our entire budget today just on food. Yeah, we haven't actually calculated it, but uh, I'll calculate it after the fact and I'll put it on screen. That hurts. So tomorrow we'll be exploring the city on a budget and coming back and eating cup noodles. <laughs> Just a bit of reality thrown in. Not every day is this. Yeah, that's our normal diet, <laughs> the cup noodles. This is so good. or you're a regular spoon person. Teaspoon all the way.